Good morning, good morning, peeps. Julia Jordan, your favorite real estate agent out of beautiful Houston, Texas. Beautiful weather like every day. I wanted to come to you with a topic, uh, a question that we often get asked as agents when I want to buy a new house and I also same time want to sell my current house. How do we go about it? Because guess what? People don't want to be homeless. They don't want to sleep in their car. Uh, they want to go seamlessly from one property into the next. I start, I have three, um, three of the most typical used tools that we do in real estate. The third one is my favorite and untypical. Uh, let's start, let me start worst to best. Okay. But all three are really good options. The first one, one is something like a bridge loan. So, um, you stay in your home, you go under contract with the next one. And there are companies that for a certain percentage of the purchase price, make you a cash buyer. What happens is they officially become the buyer but they buy a house for you so everything is set in concrete and uh, this is super safe they buy the house for you you pay them for their service a percentage and uh, the last two years that was actually very competitive because all of a sudden your property was bought as a cash deal so you were very um, very straightforward and very competitive without having to go uh, 50 80k over asking our market has changed, so we do not need this so much anymore. I have offered it recently, but there were other better options for my clients. The second one, what is the most used in my business is the seller lease back. So as long as the seller is looking for something where we have enough inventory, what I call a cookie cutter house. So you don't want something very, very rare out there, very, very specific. You just want a four bedroom or a three bedroom in a regular neighborhood where we constantly have inventory come on the market. So where I see as your agent, this is very likely to get for you. We can uh, put the new property under contract while we have the current one already listed. And then we try to time them with the gap up of not more than four or six weeks. So you are closing on the next property while we are selling the current one. Yes, there is a contingency, but in this market, we are able able to um, usually get your properties even with a contingency. If we don't have to have that, even better. Um, so that is what I say is the most common seller lease back. So you basically lease back your own property after it is sold for two weeks, four weeks, something like that. Everything else is a little bit harder to negotiate. Six weeks and up is a little bit more tricky because the person that is buying your property, they have to comply with their lender's regulation. And usually that lender is expecting them to occupy the property. So they don't want to run into uh, mortgage fraud and things like that. It's a big word. Officially it is mortgage fraud. In real life, probably no one will check on that. But what I do see is that buyers, uh, they don't want to buy a house and then wait forever when they go house shopping they are already expiring on their lease or also another contingency selling their own property okay so now my very favorite and that one we haven't used uh, in a while and this doesn't fit for everybody because it is um, the best thing when people's current home is paid off and I tell you why. I have right now clients and I hope they're watching this video. I will forward it to them. They are selling their current property, which is completely paid off in full. And we are house shopping for the next one. So how do we go about it? The overall goal is to sell the current house, to buy the new one and live again with no mortgage. The question is, how do we access the money for the new property while the current one... Um, what we can use is a so-called HELOC. We use a home equity line of credit. If you simply go by the appraisal district amount of your property, which sometimes is a tiny bit lower than the actual value, uh, rarely it is opposite way around. Um, let's say the house uh, at the tax tax uh, district is valued for 400. Um, they would get a home equity line of credit simply on that amount for 80% for no charge. Home equity line of credit does not charge for the process usually. Um, and if you say, well, my value is 500 and the tax district is only showing it for 400 um, and you want to max out or you need the whole amount, what you do is you pay for an appraisal. It is not going to the uh, banker. The banker 
just needs the appraisal to see the current value of your home and then again same process you get um, a line of credit what is basically usable like a credit card just way cheaper um, for whatever amount they come up with 80% of that amount so what you then do is that is very accessible that kind of money the moment you find the new property you can take that money out before closing close on the new one and then we put your current property uh, on the market and those expenses usually are much less because let's say right now i talked yesterday to a banker and he said right now they're at eight eight and a half percent that sounds a lot but actually it is not any other um path also costs you money the lease back usually you pay rent for your own property to continue using it because the new owner already pays a mortgage on it right so they say okay if you want to stay in your house and we pay already for it taxes insurance mortgage etc then at least reimburse us please for our monthly expenses usually we use a standard average rent amount in that certain area for that kind of a property so you see Whenever you want to live in a house, guess what? You have to pay for it. Um, and home equity line of credit is very, very cheap and affordable because you get your hands on the whole amount that you need. Let's say in this case, 400K. Um, and you only pay for that short amount of time where you actually use the money. Let's say you buy the new property. It is closing day and you need two more weeks to move. Yeah, you to get all your stuff packed up, get it to the new property maybe put a new carpet or paint the current home once it is vacant and then your agent lists it for you it takes another four weeks six weeks to have it sold right the buyer is usually 30 days under contract most of the buyers use financing um and then the money of your current home would hit your account you use that money to pay off your line of credit remember it is like a credit card and you only pay per day for those days that you're using it an alternative would be if people are fine with their debt to income ratio they buy the new property with a regular mortgage um, the process costs you money what is several thousand dollars five thousand dollars seven thousand dollars something like that depending on the purchase price um, and then the moment they are selling the current home they can pay off the mortgage the lender the regular mortgage lender um, is not expecting that usually they want you to at least six months or a year hold that mortgage but with our regulations you do have the right to at any point in time pay off your mortgage you just need to get your hands on money from somewhere right so if you're selling a current property that's of course where your money would come from the cheaper process for that if your current property is paid off or you do have a whole lot of equity in your property to go let's say you have um uh, let's say you have a property to make even numbers one million and you only owe 300 on it between 300 up to 800 so 80 percent you could cash out this amount with the home equity line of credit use it for whatever you're buying or down payment on investment property or pay in full for a flip property for example that you want to use so home equity line of credits while the interest rate is higher the interest rate only gets charged per day and if you run your numbers that system is cheaper and saving you more money in compared to hard money let's say private money usually um and of course also usually a regular mortgage and you are way more competitive in your offers because that money is accessible as cash it is basically cash that you take out of your primary residence watch out it only works on your primary uh, in this way how i explained um so what i want to encourage you is if you want to make any money moves any real estate moves talk to someone that you trust talk to someone who is doing that themselves who is experienced who has made some money don't don't get financial advice from broke people i always say it's like um when someone is not in shape you would not make them your fitness trainer right <laughs> uh, logic natural um so talk to someone who knows that and who gets a certain kick out of 
figuring out a um, good path for moving around your money, growing your money. And uh, right now I'm just learning a whole lot about velocity of money. So always keeping the money moving around. Um, whenever your money is standing still, guess what? Someone else is working with your money. If we just put our money in a savings account, uh, it is sitting there still. What means, of course, the banker is using your money. So there are ways um, how to be smart with your money and how to make it grow and my favorite vehicle is real estate still uh, and I continuously learn and in this market it's changing again what I think is totally exciting many agents do not know how to maneuver that a third of agents are leaving the industry I personally think that is good that those people that are strong and uh, engaged and interested in the topic itself and actually successful that they do more business and those people that were just dabbling around and being in everybody's way that they're leaving the industry I personally am fine with that um, there are so many other jobs that you can and do uh, where you do not risk other people's money because it is people's usually most expensive transaction of their lifetime if you uh, move every five six years there are so and so many properties that you go through in your lifetime and if at any property buying and selling you just max out that adds up to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars at your end of your lifetime and then talking uh, like Albert Einstein or, or remembering the words of uh, Albert Einstein compound interest is the eighth world wonder and most people don't understand it uh, a ten thousand dollar when you're 20 years old how it multiplies to when you're a senior and how it literally can change your mind when you're smart with your money so if you want to talk smart money how to grow it uh, to give yourself a better life, to create generational wealth, um, to ensure your kids' education or whatever kind of fancy hobby you might have or restaurant habit or whatever. Um, I love uh, educating people. I love having a chat about your situation and also hooking you up with the right people. Uh, I'm not the end of all wisdom naturally, um, but if you don't know something, you need to know the people that do know. And definitely I do know a lot of people and my favorite thing is just getting people connected and uh, then seeing them flourish. I really get a personal kick out of that, okay? If you know anyone who needs a top agent, let me know, 832-444-4923. Um, I appreciate your referral and I would be honored to help your peeps, your friends and your family, okay? Bye-bye, thank you, have a wonderful day.